What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to my updated level 1 to 99 Slayer Guide. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to train your Slayer level in old school. I'll start off with the basics, I'll show the best weapons and armor, and I'll show 5 training styles that you can follow. Let's get into it. So why should you train your Slayer? Slayer unlocks monsters that you can't normally kill, with some being the most profitable monsters in the game. Some of the Slayer bosses bring in millions, the most profitable being the Alchemical Hydra, which nets close to 4 mil per hour. Overall, on your journey to 99 Slayer, you can make a lot of money depending on your playstyle. Iron Men also get a lot of benefit out of Slayer. The skill unlocks unique drops like the Abyssal Whip, the Trident, the Occult Necklace, and more. For Iron Men to be raids ready, they need to train their Slayer for these upgrades. Another reason to train Slayer is you level your combat stats as you go. Leveling to 99 Slayer gets you close to 99 in all of the combat stats. It's efficient combat experience because your XP per hour is boosted by the effects of the Black Mask or the Slayer Helmet, which give a damage and accuracy boost on Slayer tasks. 10 quests in Old School have a Slayer level requirement. Some important ones include Desert Treasure 1, Animal Magnetism, The Fremenic Exiles, and Monkey Madness 2. You need level 69 Slayer to get the quest cape, and you need level 95 Slayer for the Achievement Diary cape. Before I go further, I have a sponsor for this guide. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And today, I introduce you to a new champion, Professor Death Knight. Hello students, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Death Knight, putting on my professor's cap with a lesson about Live Arena. What's Live Arena, you ask? Why, it's a new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. Does that sound terrifying? Of course. But some of the best things in life are scary as heck like Zargala, or going to the dentist. Oh, and there's a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> I love teamwork. And when you'll win, you'll get live arena crests, which you can spend at the Great Hall to unlock special area bonuses. Or so I hear, because I'm too afraid to find out. <laughs> but Mr. Nibble says there's tons of special rewards. All right, any questions? Um, how do you feel about banning champions in live arena? I hate it. I wish everybody could play. Back in school, I would always get picked last. But you know, rules are rules. So. What's your battle strategy in the arena? Well, everyone thinks I'll go in fighting, but nobody expects my charm. My best strength is the gift of gab. So when they try to attack, I'll just be like, nice weather we're having, eh? Nobody will see it coming. I hope you use this knowledge you've gained here today about Live Arena to head off and do battle. Live! Make this whole dead bones professor proud, folks. Class dismissed. Do we have a bell? Oh, we should totally get a bell. If you missed the Raid animated series, Call of the Arbiter, you should check it out on the official Raid YouTube channel. There's also new content in Raid from the series. You can get the new Warlord, Artak, just by logging into Raid for seven days, between now and July 24. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses, like the epic champion, Knight Errant, and other useful items. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the basics of the Slayer skill. By speaking to one of the nine Slayer Masters in Old School, you're assigned a Slayer task. The task consists of a specific monster and the quantity of that monster that you need to kill. Each Slayer Master assigns monsters from their own task list, and higher level Slayer Masters give harder and longer tasks. For every monster that you kill on your Slayer task, you're rewarded with Slayer experience equal to the total hit points of the monster. Some Slayer monsters require items to be able to kill them. Dust Devils, for example, require a face mask, otherwise your stats get drained. These Slayer items can be bought from any Slayer master. When you complete your Slayer task, you gain a number of Slayer points depending on the Slayer Master. Slayer points give access to a wide range of Slayer-related rewards, and I'll talk more about Slayer points soon. 
Overall, Slayer is a skill that is significantly faster if you have high combat stats. It's extremely slow at a low combat level, so I would suggest starting Slayer at a minimum of 70 combat. However, I will be covering some low level strategies in this guide. Now I'm going to go over the Slayer Masters. There are 9 Slayer Masters in Old School. In Berthorp, there's Turael, who assigns short, easy Slayer tasks. There are no requirements to use Turael, although he gives no Slayer points after completing a task. Spria is the most recently added Slayer Master, and she is Turael's daughter, located in Draenor Village. To be assigned a task from her, you need to have completed the Poor Sign of Interest quest. She assigns the same tasks as Turael and also gives no points. Cristilia in Edgeville is the Wilderness Slayer Master. She has no requirements to use apart from completing one regular Slayer task. She gives the most points out of any Master, although you have to complete her tasks in the Wilderness. On her tasks, monsters drop Laren's keys, which are worth over 170k on the Grand Exchange. In Canifus, there's a Slayer Master named Maz Shana. He requires level 20 combat to use, and assigns monsters mostly within Mauritania. The tasks are great for low level accounts, although he gives very few Slayer points. Vanaka is the level 40 combat Slayer Master, and he resides in Edgeville Dungeon. He assigns some pretty difficult tasks for a level 40 account, including some Dragon's tasks. At 70 combat, you can use Chaldar in Xanarus. This means you need to complete the Lost City quest to access her. She assigns fairly efficient Slayer tasks and gives a decent amount of points. A downside is that she assigns Iron Dragon tasks very commonly. At 75 combat, you can use Konar, who's in Mount Karulam on Zaya. Konar assigns location-specific tasks, where you can only kill monsters in certain areas. On her tasks, you have a chance of getting a Brimstone Key, which you can use to open a chest near Konar for valuable loot. Neve in the Tree Gnome Stronghold is the level 85 Slayer Master. She is replaced with Steve after you complete Monkey Madness 2. Neve assigns fast XP tasks and is the closest master to a teleport. The final master is Duradel, located in Shiloh Village. To use his tasks, you need 100 combat and 50 Slayer. He assigns long, efficient tasks and is the best Slayer Master to use for the fastest XP. There's a neat update that Jagex introduced, where with 99 Slayer, you can access any Slayer Master regardless of the requirements. That means that pures with low combat can access Duradel, Neve, and Konar at 99 Slayer. Now let's talk about Slayer Points. As I mentioned earlier, Slayer Points are rewarded for completing tasks. The Wilderness Slayer Master gives the most points, which is 25 per task, and Turael and Spria gives 0 points. If you complete the Elite Kuran Diary, Kona rewards 2 more Slayer Points per task, and the Elite Western Provinces Diary boosts Neve Slayer Points to match Duradel's. You don't get any Slayer Points for your first 4 tasks, but every 10 tasks you get a boosted amount of Slayer Points. You get 5 times the points every 10th task, 15 times every 50th, and it continues to 50 times for every 1000th. With these Slayer Points, you can spend them at any Slayer Master by right-clicking and selecting Rewards. There's four categories of rewards. There's Unlocks, where you can unlock new tasks, unlock Slayer items, or unlock utilities like the Slayer Helmet. There's Extends, where you can increase the number of monsters assigned for certain tasks. There's Buys, where you can trade Slayer Points for items like Slayer Rings, Broad Bolts, and different storage bags. Lastly, there's Slayer Task Rewards, where you can block or skip a Slayer task. The best unlock order for your Slayer Points comes down to your training style. In the training styles section, I'll talk more about point unlock order, but generally, this is the unlock order that most players go for. You firstly unlock superior Slayer monsters, and these give more XP. Then you should spend points blocking tasks, then you unlock the Slayer Helmet. 
Next, I'd like to cover the useful unlocks that you should aim to have. There's a number of quests in Old School that unlock Slayer tasks. For example, Horror from the Deep unlocks Dagonoth tasks, Desert Treasure 1 unlocks Dust Devils, and starting Dragon Slayer 1 unlocks Dragon's tasks. There's a few other useful quests. Dwarf Cannon lets you use the Multi Cannon, which greatly speeds up your tasks. Desert Treasure 1 unlocks the Ancient Spellbook, which is important for bursting and partially completing Fairy Tale Part 2 lets you use Fairy Rings, which are almost essential. Leveling your crafting is also important for Slayer. With 54 crafting and 400 Slayer points, you can learn to craft Slayer Helmets, which combines multiple Slayer equipment into one helmet. With 75 crafting and 300 Slayer points, you can learn to craft Slayer Rings, which are vital for getting to Slayer locations the fastest. On top of these unlocks, you should also get Expeditious Bracelets and Bracelets of Slaughter. Expeditious Bracelets shorten your Slayer task, whereas Bracelets of Slaughter extend your task. These are a must if you want the best XP rates. Iron Men should make these bracelets themselves and you need 38 crafting and 49 magic to make them. It's also very useful to have an upgraded player owned house. A house with teleports, a jewelry box, a fairy ring, restoration pool and an occult altar would be very beneficial. Next, I'm going to talk about which armor and weapons you should use. With Slayer, it's recommended to mainly melee your tasks while you use a cannon and burst on the burstable tasks. Melee is the most popular main style due to its low cost, although ranged is another fairly popular option. Magic is not recommended as your main combat style and it should only be used when bursting. Now let's talk about melee combat. The best in slot for melee is the Fang, which is only 30 mil right now. The Rapier, Inquisitor's Mace and Blade of Seldor are all second best in slot and a cheaper option to use is a regular whip, which costs 1.7 mil right now. As with melee armor, it's important to have the Dragon Defender unlocked. A black mask or a slayer helmet is also essential for slayer training. The best in slot melee gear is Torva, although you can get away with a fighter torso and obsidian plate legs as a far cheaper option. On some slayer tasks, you'll want to wear magic defensive gear. Missouri is the best in slot, but Dragonhide does the trick. Don't use Armadil because it gives a negative melee attack bonus. When slaying, for a lot of tasks, you'll want to use Protection Prayers. After the Slug Menace quest, you can use Prozolite, which gives the highest prayer bonus. Monk Robes are second best, and they give the same bonus as Initiate and God Vestment Robes. With ranged, if you cannon as many tasks as possible from level 1 to 99 Slayer, you'll get over 90 ranged. This assumes you're using melee as your main combat style. But if you do choose to use ranged as your main style, a bofa, a blowpipe or a magic shortbow are the best. As with ranged armor, these are the best options to use. Missouri is best in slot, although black dehyde is a cost effective option. You should always use an imbued black mask or an imbued slayer helmet if you're ranging. The imbue gives damage and accuracy boosts to ranged and it can be imbued at the nightmare zone, soul wars or the PVP arena. For magic, you'll need a setup for bursting. For a weapon, you should bring at least an ancient staff to auto cast ancient magics. The Kodai wand is the best in slot, currently costing 83 mil. For Mage Armor, Ancestral is the best in slot and God Vestment Robes are a good option because of their prayer bonus. You should have an imbued Black Mask or imbued Slayer Helmet as well, plus always bring an Occult Necklace. Now let's get into the training styles. There's five training styles that I'm going to cover. Low level training, the fastest experience, profitable Slayer, AFK Slayer and getting the most Slayer points. 
Upon speaking to a Slayer Master and retrieving your first Slayer task, you'll receive an Enchanted Gem. This lets you check your current task and how many you have left. At level 1 Slayer, I suggest completing the Varrock Museum quiz to get straight to level 9. Then, you can complete the Poor Sign of Interest quest to get to level 13, plus you get 30 Slayer points as a reward. At a low combat level, I recommend using the Canifus Slayer Master, since all of his tasks are close by to him. Vanika can be used at 40 combat, but he assigns dragons and harder tasks, so I don't recommend him at level 40. If you're starting Slayer at a high combat level, then you can start with Slayer Masters like Chelda or Neve for decent XP rates. For the fastest Slayer experience in old school, you'll be extending burstable tasks with Slayer Points and the Bracelet of Slaughter. Then you'll be using the Expeditious Bracelet and a Cannon on tasks that aren't burstable. Then you'll skip and block the absolute slowest tasks, regardless of how profitable they are. Duradel is the best master to use for the fastest experience. And next is Neve or Steve. You should not use Konar if you're going for the fastest XP. These are the tasks that you should skip. All of these tasks are not cannonable and slow. In terms of tasks you should block, it depends on the task weightings, which means how often they get assigned. On the screen, I have the suggested blocks for Duradel and Neve, taking into account their task weightings. With your Slayer Points, this is the unlock order that you should use. You should always start with Bigger and Badder for the extra Slayer XP, then block tasks, extend Dust Devils and Necreels, then unlock the Slayer Helmet and Slayer Rings. As I mentioned, you should always be using the Bracelet of Slaughter on Burstable tasks, and you should always use the Expeditious Bracelet on any other task that you do. Now for the most profitable Slayer training. For this, you won't be bursting or using a cannon, and you'll be blocking and skipping tasks that don't make money, even if they're really fast XP. The best Slayer Masters to use for money are Konar and Crystillia, although you can make good money from Duradel and Neve as well. As I mentioned earlier, you get Brimstone Keys on Konar's Slayer tasks, and each key averages 86k in loot. Crystillia is the Wilderness Master, and her tasks drop Laren's Keys. There are a number of tasks you should unlock to make more profit. Some of them require quests, and others can be unlocked with Slayer Points. These are the tasks you should skip if you're going for the most profit. Despite Dagonoths and Calphites being decent experience, they don't drop anything valuable. As with blocks, once again, it depends on the Slayer Master. And on the screen, I have the blocks for Konar, Duradel, and Neve. If you want, you can take a screenshot to save it. With your Slayer Points, you should start with Bigger and Badder, then Block Tasks, then you unlock Aviancies and Lizard Men, and then unlock the Slayer Helmet and Slayer Rings. Now for AFK Slayer. To AFK, you'll be fighting aggressive monsters, monsters that you can stack in multi, and you'll be using a cannon. Aggressive monsters in old school stay aggressive for 10 to 20 minutes depending on the monster. This lets you sit AFK until they stop attacking you. In multi-combat areas, you can attack multiple enemies at once and then AFK and you'll kill them one by one. Using a cannon, you can AFK for 5 minutes at a time, or up to 10 minutes with the combat achievements. To AFK the longest, you can use either Guthans or a prayer bonus setup. Wearing full proselyte with protect from melee active lasts 10 minutes for 70 prayer points. On tasks that you can AFK for a long time, you should be using bracelets of slaughter to extend them. On tasks that aren't very AFK, you should use expeditious bracelets. As with skipping tasks for AFK experience, you'll want to skip Dragon's tasks, as well as other non-AFK tasks, regardless of their XP rate and how profitable they are. You'll block non-AFK tasks that have the highest task weighting. These are the block lists for Duradel and Neve for AFK Slayer training. With your Slayer Points, you should start with unlocking Gargoyle Smasher, then Shroom Sprayer. These reduce the amount of clicking required to kill Gargoyles and Zygomites. Then Block Tasks, unlock the Slayer Helmet, Slayer Rings, then Bigger and Badder. 
Now, to get the most Slayer points in Old School, there's two different methods. You can use either the Wilderness Slayer Master, or you can boost with Konar. Wilderness Slayer is up to 250 points per hour. For the fastest points, you can take a cannon with you into the wilderness, but I advise taking as little as 300 cannonballs. You can also burst some Slayer tasks in the Wilderness Slayer caves, although it's very dangerous to do. For Wilderness Slayer, some players choose not to skip or block any tasks, but on the screen are some suggestions of tasks you might consider skipping. It's up to you which tasks you want to block out of these. With your Slayer points, you should firstly unlock the I Wildy More Slayer reward, which is free, then Bigger and Badder, then the Slayer Helmet. Next is Konar Boosting, and this involves doing 9 tasks at Turael in Berthorp, then completing the 10th task milestone at Konar. With the right teleports, boosting is pretty effortless, and you can get up to 200 Slayer points per hour. In the description, I've linked a Konar boosting guide with all of the information that you'll need. Now I'm going to show some Slayer tips and tricks that will greatly improve your training. If you get a Slayer task from a Slayer Master and it's too difficult, you can go to Turael and get an easier task at the expense of resetting your task streak. You start getting points from the 5th task in your task streak, so it's recommended to use Turael for the first 4 tasks. There are certain monsters you should be careful running past, particularly in the Mauritania Slayer Tower. If you don't wear the right items, your stats get drained very quickly. There's a number of alternative monsters that you can kill that provide better XP rates or profit on certain Slayer tasks. On the screen are some of them. Reanimating and Sold Heads is a notable one, where you can train prayer while you complete your Slayer task. It's very beneficial to learn how to prayer flick. You can prayer flick protection prayers, or you can prayer flick offensive prayers as well. When you're using a cannon in a single way combat area, it acts as if it's multi-combat if you're in a safe spot. This is very useful in Neve's Cave. If you get assigned a Jad Slayer task, you can skip it for free by entering and exiting the fight caves. You can complete some Slayer tasks in the Nightmare Zone. You can complete Black Demons, Hellhounds or Trolls. If you've completed Lunar Diplomacy and have 67 magic, you can use NPC Contact to contact Slayer Masters. This means you can get a new task very quickly from anywhere. Now for some Iron Man Slayer tips. As an Iron Man, you can follow the same training styles that I've shown earlier in the video. A key difference though, is the use of a cannon. Cannoning is not efficient as an Iron Man, since cannonballs take a very long time to make. Making cannonballs is only worth it if you're solely looking for something to AFK, and you have the mold from the giant's foundry. As an Iron Man, the herb sack is particularly useful with Slayer. You'll come across thousands of herbs on your journey to 99 Slayer, and it's best not to miss any. Anyways, that's my updated level 1 to 99 Slayer guide for old school. If you want to freshen up on any part of the guide, all of the timestamps are linked in the description. If you enjoyed this guide, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more old school content. Be sure to check out Raid Shadow Legends, and use my link in the description to get $30 worth of rewards. Thanks for watching.